is a show that focuses on the person behind the brony. I'm your host, Osaka Jack. Please sit back and relax as we talk to this week's guest brony. Hello, everyone. This is Into the Spotlight with Osaka Jack. With me today, I have someone who, if I use his Twitter name, it's going to sound like I'm introducing myself, but I'm not. So I'm Josh Dean, who is not me. Yeah, you are, you are not Josh Dean. No. I'm but, Josh Dean, but you're not Josh Dean. Right. So I have I'm Josh Dean, but I'm not I'm oh, Josh Dean. Oh, I'm Dean. Josh Dean. You're, right, you're, you're, Josh you're Dean. Osaka Jack. I'm, I'm Josh Dean. Who's on first? Yeah, what's on second? Exactly. <laughs> I don't know. Third base, third base. Oh, fair enough. <laughs> How are you today, Josh Dean? Uh, I am doing good, man. How about yourself? I'm doing okay. I miss the snow, and everybody's going to attack me for saying that, but I still miss it. It's well, a it's lovely okay. springtime day for this, the last day of February, and I want my cold, windy snow to return. Man, I have, like, the <laughs> smallest, the smallest of violins playing just for you. <laughs> yes, that's the general consensus that I get. Oh, boo-hoo, we've got 48 feet of snow, and you complain because you don't have enough. I'm sorry, I love it. Eh, oh well. Well, if there's anybody who's been hiding under a rock on Mars with their eyes closed and fingers in their ears, who are you and what do you do? Uh, well, I think we've already established who I am. That's true. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm, I'm Josh Dean. Uh, I'm actually the chairman of you know, Tiny Convention mm. uh, for Tiny Little Horses. You might, you might have heard of it. It's called BronyCon. BronyCon. Uh, yeah. Hold on, let me do a quick internet search. Oh, that itty bitty thing. Right. Right. Okay. Yeah, the bro econ, You know right. where the 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 dude athletic joint pain convention. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Bro econ. Sure. Sure. The predecessor to Arthriticon. Yes. Yes. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, not to be confused with the Betty Crocker uh, bro, uh, brownie con. Right. Which honestly would be pretty cool. But yeah, no, no. <laughs> I would go there just for the scent. Oh man! I would go to BrownieCon just to like sniff. Oh man, this place smells amazing. You think that, but I have a feeling like maybe ten minutes in, you'd be like, "That's enough." Either give me a glass of milk, or I got to get out of here. This is true. This is true. <laughs> but no, no, no. That's uh, BronyCon, the convention for bronies. Mm-hmm. You know, the the one that's in Baltimore. Right. It's has uh, it does change cities though, right? Um, well, not anymore. Okay. Uh, we uh, it's really interesting. Mm. Um, you know, most people know the history by now. Although, if you're if you're new to this game, uh, BronyCon uh, started um, in uh, New York. It started <laughs> in a uh, just like a little joint, uh, served like a hundred people. Right. Um, they did a couple of events there, um, but they really outgrew their size by the time the January of 2012 convention mm-hmm. uh, came around. Uh, so they said, well, screw this. This is – we need a bigger place. Right. And so they, they went to Secaucus, uh, which, you know, funny enough, is the – that was the convention that really started it all for a lot of people, mm-hmm. uh, including myself. That was that was my first convention. I went as an attendee. Oh. Okay. Um, but you know, four thousand people. They maxed out the capacity. Wow. Uh, that that wasn't enough for them either. <laughs> um, so, you know, BronyCon did some scouting. Uh, checked out a couple of different places. Checked Philadelphia. Mm-hmm. Uh, checked Boston. Um, and I think. I think we might have looked at the Yavid Center, although that's mucho bucks. So, right, right. No, but ultimately, we landed in Baltimore, oh, uh, okay. home of the Wire and Otacon, Crabs, and BronyCon. Um, right. And sure enough, after last year, uh, we pretty much said, "This is where we're going to put our roots," mm-hmm. um, and we've decided barring some sort of crazy uh, Brony-Palooza-related earthquake catastrophe, Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. uh, we will probably stay in Baltimore. Okay. All right, so it is Baltimore. All right, I see. So we need a Raven-based pony, then, don't we? Uh, Actually, you know, funny enough, uh, when when the Ravens 
uh, won the Super Bowl, we actually did some we did some celebratory art for them, including uh, an OC for the Ravens. Oh, uh, so so we we did it. <laughs> I honestly, you know what? Just for a second, and I hope you will take into account the amount of time I've been here when I say this. I had forgotten about the sports team. I was just thinking Poe. Oh no, Rob! I was definitely talking about the Baltimore Ravens. Gotcha. Gotcha. <laughs> um, yeah, definitely the Baltimore Ravens. Oh. But 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 also good reference on your part. Hey. <laughs> Yay! I can remember things from literature. Woohoo! <laughs> just not sports teams as well. <laughs> Which is nothing against them. It's just I lived here for over a decade now, and we don't really have football. You know, funny. I, I don't know if the Japanese. I don't, I don't want. I don't know what a Japanese football game would look like. I've been to a Japanese baseball game, so I know what mm. that would look like. Yes. Uh, but if you try to like take that and apply it to football, I just don't think it would work. No, no, I don't think so. Though to be honest, I mean, the Japanese rugby team is doing quite well internationally. And from what I've seen, American football is starting to gain a little bit of popularity among the colleges. Just I mm. don't, don't get me wrong. I'd watch the game. Oh, but yeah. it's just it's really hard for me to like fathom it. Yeah. Yeah. L- likewise, yes. Though, you know, you get some of the sumo wrestlers on the front line. I don't think they would have much of a problem on defense. Oh, I didn't even think of that. That's not. That's a good point. <laughs> sumo wrestlers probably would would play a solid defensive line. Yeah, It'd be hard to blitz that. Actually, hell, if if you get them into a tight enough formation, they could be a good offensive line too. Just walking slowly forward. Ah, <laughs> uh, that's. I feel like I would get bored with that really quick. Like yeah, you get, you yeah. get, you get, you get a. Uh, you get a quarter or two in, and halftime would roll around and just be like, this isn't even fun anymore. It's just not a challenge. Yeah. <laughs> Either that, or both teams are going to do the same thing, and then it's just sumo wrestling, and then yeah, there happens to be a football on the field. <laughs> Which, honestly, I think might be funny. It'd be like the old Nintendo game Ice Hockey, where you get one guy who just chooses all the chubby players for his team. And they're moving really slow, but nobody can stop them. Uh, yeah, that that... that... I could see that. <laughs> yeah, I could see that. Not, that's I still wouldn't watch that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, you've alluded at it a little bit, but you have been in Japan, haven't you? I have. Um, back in about 2005, I spent uh, a few months in Japan for college. Okay. Uh, started technically started in Kyoto. Okay. Uh, but flew down to Nagasaki. And then slowly, me and the group I was with uh, made our way back up to Kyoto. Uh, some of us went to Tokyo. I refused to because it's Kyoto, except twice as expensive and with a lot more flashing lights. Um, yeah, more foreigners too. That too. But like we we did, um, we did Nagasaki. Uh, we did Hiroshima. Hmm. We did uh, Beppu. Mm-hmm. Which I always get corrected on by the Japanese because it's like it's like it's Beppu or whatever, whatever. Uh, but but close enough. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I we did Fukushima as well, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And then Kyoto. It was it was a great time. Right. Uh, I saw, saw a lot of interesting things. A lot <laughs> of during a lot of a lot of crazy nights. Probably you know we were talking about this a little earlier, mm. uh, but I I watched a bunch of, like, college kids uh, in a park push a car (laughs) into a river. (laughs) And the thing that I didn't mention Uh was a bunch of them just, like, stripped down to their birthday suits and then just jumped in the river, too. (laughs) Okay, that's... Now I understand the intelligence that we were talking about. Uh, Yeah. That's not wise. (laughs) <laughs> no, this is this is why you don't get completely blitzed um, yep. at, at four in the morning in the yep. middle of Kyoto. <laughs> yes, this yeah, that's yeah. <laughs> you, you see some things, kids. Some really weird things. In indeed, yeah. The the drunk patrol will be out. 
<laughs> but but no, it was it was it was a really good time, an expensive time, but definitely not something I would trade for the world. Yeah, that's uh, awesome. Like you know, even if you don't do like Japan and you do like another country, oh, yeah. uh, definitely always worth going out and seeing the world. Yeah, I, I recommend that. I I always found it hilarious uh, when I was in high school, even college, or you know, anytime. I would have family members who would say how much they wanted to visit the moon and go to other planets, and meanwhile they had never driven out of the state. Oh man, so you. <sighs> I can understand if somebody can't go international, because it can get expensive, but you've got a car, and we have one of the best highway systems on Earth, and you're not driving anywhere. You're not visiting a new place. Why do you think you would go to the moon? I don't know. You know, I, I, part of me agrees with you, but I, at the same time, I can't necessarily blame them from dreaming big. Oh, yeah. Uh, I've always wanted to do some space travel. Oh, I'm uh, sure it'd be interesting, just... In my mind, it was, if you're not going to drive an hour out of your way, I don't think you're going to do several months of prep time to leave the planet. I don't know. I'm Maybe. Maybe you would. <laughs> maybe. I think it takes a special kind of person yeah. uh, to to want to do that. But, you know, these, these people might have this stuff. Yeah. And honestly, some of my family members, I would gladly fund their trip off the planet. Uh, not the return. I would gladly fund them to get off the planet. Oh, God. No, no, You're I'm, just joking. Saying I'm that. joking. Yeah, I am. I wouldn't pay. <laughs> just in case Ma's listening. <laughs> well, you didn't, uh, we mentioned it a little bit, but you didn't even uh, start on BronyCon until 2012. And you were just an attendee then. It's true. Um, I, and I'll be completely honest with you, too. I really didn't want to go. You know oh. who wanted to go? Who's that? My, girl, my girlfriend wanted to go. Oh. Uh, like, that was, like, they had, you know, Browning kind of had a bunch of guests, and they and they had, like, Lauren Faust, mm-hmm. uh, and my girlfriend found out about this, and she was like, oh, my God, Josh, we got to go. <laughs> uh, and eventually I just buckled, and I looked at her, and I was like, so you want to go to BronyCon? She was like, yes. <laughs> uh, and I was like, all right, well, we'll take a road trip there. And, you know. <laughs> uh went and it was it was a heck of an experience mm-hmm. uh, that ultimately uh left me with a really you know cheesily put yearning desire uh to want to do something for this fandom sure um and you know by trade i'm a i'm a web developer i do mm-hmm. web consulting javascript consulting okay uh for my full-time career right, right. um and, you know, I looked at BronyCon's website for 2012, and for those of you who remember it, it was, it was big, it was black, it was neon colored with Rainbow Dash, yep. and it sucked. It looked <laughs> terrible. And I, uh, I, I made, I emailed them, and I told them, look, guys, your website is terrible. <laughs> let, me, let me do your website. Uh, <laughs> And and I suppose, as they say, the rest was history. Right, right. Huh, okay. So there's the message, guys. Go to conventions and offer to do that stuff for them. Then you can be in charge. Uh, well... <laughs> <laughs> it's not, I, would, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't say it's that easy. Uh, right, right. The, the, story, the story from me becoming a web developer to me eventually being the chair is, is, is a little bit more of yes, a winding yes, road than that one. But... But always dream big, that's for sure. Yeah, that's very true, yeah. <laughs> you, it's, it's definitely a testament of, of you never know where you're going to be and how it will affect you. Very true, very true. <laughs> no, I, I like that idea. Just offer to do things for a convention, then you can run it. There we go. That's how it works. <laughs> a, a, a to B. Just be like, you, you know what, you, uh, you go and you email Everfree Northwest and be like, <laughs> so, um, I make websites. Um, I'm going to run your convention. Now. <laughs> Look out, Pajati. I'm coming for you. <laughs> I, w- I would be interested to see how many emails they get at this point just requesting that. He said it was okay. This is how it's done, right? Yeah. Chair BronyCon said, go email Everfree <laughs> Northwest. Um, and tell them first tell them that you want to be the con chair uh, and then tell them that the Mariners suck and the Orioles are awesome oh my 
Uh, for those started. Uh, oh dear. For those who don't know, uh, we have there's a there's a friendly rivalry between Everfree Northwest and Brony Khan's baseball teams. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Uh, because we had uh, we had a, a game in Baltimore uh, during Brony Con, and coincidentally enough, we have a game in Baltimore for 2014 as well. Oh my! So, so it's going to be a rematch. Interesting, interesting. Mm-hmm. Because as we all know, you know, football didn't go so well for the East Coast. <laughs> Not this year. Not this. Year. <laughs> although, although truth be told, I'm actually I'm you know I'm a Packers fan. So oh, okay, all right. I'm, I'm from Wisconsin, so gotcha, cheese head. I'm, I'm yep. I'm obligated to be a fan of the Packers, mm. of beer, and right. uh, the lesser known Bloody Marys. Interesting. That's uh, is. Does it originate from that area, or is just very popular there? It's just very popular. Okay. It's, okay. It's, I mean, you know, it's you know, by the dog or hair of the dog that bit you. I sure, think sure. Is the right. Uh, and Sunday Sunday morning is not complete without a Bloody Mary. Interesting. I. It was uh, just this last summer I was introduced. It it was in Japan. Um, it actually came in a can, which I found bleh. But, uh, oh, what was the name? Red Eye? Red Eye. Red Eye is f- beer with tomato juice. Oh. oh. That oh. was kind of my response, and I got a can of it, and apparently you're supposed to not shake it, but you're supposed to turn it upside down and then allow it to mix. And I tried it, and, yeah, it was completely horrible. Yeah, I, I think I just vomited a little in my mouth. <laughs> Though, to well, be I, honest, I, I don't care for tomato juice on its own, so I probably wasn't the best test audience. But at the same time, bleh, no. Let me, let me, let me tell you this. So <laughs> if you're, if you're, you're going to mix a beer and a juice, there's only one juice you use, and that's orange juice. I would and, what we, and what we call that is a beer mosa. Okay. I've, uh, I've had a lunchbox before. Which is uh, a shot of uh, Jägermeister in a, uh, a gla- in a large uh, stein that has beer and orange juice in it, and you slam the whole thing. Well, it's kind of like that, but not as terrible. Okay. <laughs> it was really good. I enjoyed it. <laughs> um, but, uh, well, I mean, you use a specific beer. You do like, you do like a, a white ale okay. or, a, or a wheat beer. Uh-huh. Uh, and then it, it's 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 just really good. I mean, you, I mean, it's if you don't like champagne, but you kind of want to do a mimosa. All right, huh. beer beer mosa. Interesting. Okay, mosa. Huh. Like I said, I'm from Wisconsin. I know sure. my alcohols. <laughs> oh yeah, absolutely. And I, to be totally honest, I did not enjoy beer very much in the states, but I have become quite a large fan of it. Uh, I think Japanese beer has done very well. <laughs> Uh, the, well, I'm a, I'm a fan of the Super Dry. Okay, yes. Oh, yeah, Sahi Super Dry. Excellent stuff. Um, yeah, the Japanese know how to brew a decent beer. I'll, I'll give them that. Well, not just beer. This apparently has caused a little bit of an international rift uh, in the double-blind uh, scotch competition. Oh. Japan has won for the past few years. J- Japanese scotch, Japanese 10-year-old scotch has apparently been the best in the world for the past few years. Which has caused a bit of a rift in Scotland. Uh, yeah, um, I've I've been to the Centauri uh, plant uh-huh. and done their taste tests. Yeah, they are they they do some fantastic whiskeys. Yes, indeed. Um, I don't know. They and th- this is a, this is a testament to to Japanese. I don't want to call it naivety, but very hospi- hospital their their hospitality. There okay. we go. Um, that, that whiskey tasting tour, uh-huh. absolutely free. And you can go as many times as you want. I'm going to do a quick plug here for my hometown, St. Louis. You can go on a Budweiser tour for free oh, and you can do yeah. it up to three times a day. And at the end of the tour, you do get two free beers or as much soda as you'd like. Yeah. But you know what the downside of that is? I'm ready to joke, but go ahead. Then you have to drink Budweiser. <laughs> I tell you what, as an incredibly poor college student, it was a great relief to me to be able to wake up, go to the free zoo, which is the largest in North America, the free art museum, and then do a free brewery tour. I'll I'll, I'll give you that. That sounds like that sounds like a heck of a, a good time as mm. a college student. I it would is. have killed for that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I understand people mock Budweiser, and 
to be honest, yes, I would put Japanese beer quite highly of it. But at the same time, it's hometown brew, and I gotta be proud of it, even when Japanese people will buy one and say, Hey, look, I bought Budweiser. Oh, yay. Thanks for supporting my hometown. Well, I mean, you know what you know what the unofficial slogan of Budweiser is, right? No. <laughs> hey, at least we're not Coors Light. Oh, this is true. Which... Yes, yes, very true, very true. <laughs> And if you're a fan of Coors Light, you know, I'm happy to recommend any nu- any number of a uh, large amount of uh, psychiatric hotlines um, or, you know, uh, support for those who have no taste buds. I am I can provide for this. <laughs> oh, I'm going to get in so much trouble, but eh, whatever. <laughs> well, I'm curious, uh, is, in, since the time that you have been involved, what are some of the larger changes that uh, BronyCon has gone uh, um. Well. Um. Since I, you mean since I've started? Yeah. Well, since you've been involved in it, and you know, have been aware of it. Obviously, you know that includes you know head time. But sure. Um. Well, I would say a lot of things kind of just streamlined. Okay. Like there's there's a lot of a lot of back end things that people might not necessarily see, just in terms of the amount of people who work on BronyCon, right. um, who either are just really good at what they do or they do it professionally. Okay. Um, and just the amount of just sheer experience after like three years, right, right. Um, you know, that makes it a lot easier to, uh, to put on such a large convention. Mm. I would imagine um, that you get quite a few applications every year. Um, yeah, and I, I'll, I'll admit we could definitely always use more. Uh, okay. it takes, it takes like the, I'd say the, like the before convention staff, uh-huh. probably like a lot of the operations is done by a staff of under a hundred. Okay. Um, which is still a lot. Yeah, yeah. Um, but we typically need about like 400 people wow. okay. to to volunteer and staff mm-hmm. uh, for for all, all just all the different departments. Sure, sure. The, and, and it's not even in, in – part of it's because we're such a large convention. Right. But another part of it is because we don't want people to work like 72 hours straight. We want to sure. put people at like eight-hour shifts right, so right. they can – so they're not you know working – to the bone and have some time to relax and maybe see some things at the convention too. Sure, sure. Isn't I mean I, I'm not uh, familiar exactly with the uh, uh, protocol, but doesn't it work to if you do work on BronyCon, there's like discount or is it? Well, uh, it there's I'm well, sorry. there's a, it's okay. Uh, there's we we offer some perks. Okay. Um, the one you're thinking of is for gophers. Okay. Um, where basically we will say if you work a set amount of hours, mm-hmm. um, we will refund your badge. Oh, and okay. T- and typically, um, that kind of stuff is, as the name suggests, gophers. Right, uh, right. We, ha- uh, we need people to either get us things or transport things or kind of like lots of just uh, menial tasks that need to be done. Right, right, okay. Um, and then the other one, the kind of like the general staff or where people work before and at the convention, mm-hmm. um, we um, we offer, obviously, things like your shirt, your badge, and whatnot for free. Right. Uh, but we offer um, really heavily subsidized staff housing. Okay. Uh, uh, I believe the price we're at right now for this year is for $35. Okay. Uh, that gets you four nights in a hotel. Oh wow! <laughs> um, and you know when most of our hotels cost like a hundred forty bucks, right? Pretty sweet deal. Yeah, yes, uh, indeed. But then on top of that, we we provide food for you, uh, drink for you, stuff to like you know keep you nourished. Well, heck, if I ever lose my home, I'm just going to start volunteering at cons as much as possible. <laughs> well, I, I don't know. I don't know what other cons do, but right, that's, right, right. That's that, that's what BronyCon does. Right, right. <laughs> uh, so, I mean, that's there's there's some perks um, sure. outside of the fact of you know you get to help you know this this fandom's largest convention thrive. Right. Yeah, yeah. Now, I had heard. Uh, <laughs> I think I saw it. 
it might have actually been uh, the BronyCon Twitter, but it was um, mentioning how every BronyCon so far has been double the attendance of the last one. That's... Except that it was not probably going to happen again. You know, it's funny. We said that last year, too. Uh-huh. Uh, we, uh, we didn't think that we would double twice. And, I, and, and realistically, um, that should probably drop. Um, a, a good growth for a convention mm-hmm. is typically about 30, about maybe 25 to 33 percent. Right. Um, BronyCon has been a really big anomaly and has, <laughs> and has doubled. It went from like a hundred to like, I believe it was like 400. So more than doubled mm-hmm. to a thousand to 4,000 to 8,000. <laughs> and I, I swear if we get 16,000, I just might go more bald than I already am. <laughs> Do you happen to remember what is the capacity at the center that you're at now? Um, uh, well, I actually don't, but okay, I will tell okay. you. I will tell you this: mm. Otakon, which is uh, America's largest anime convention, sure. um, that takes place at the Baltimore Convention Center, mm-hmm. um, has upward up and over twenty five thousand people. Okay, so if it did happen to double from last year, you would still have capacity. Oh so yeah, um, my between like me and some of my staff. Uh, we have like an internal bet going on. We want to, <laughs> we want to hit. I believe the number would be thirteen thousand five hundred. Okay. Uh, and that number is uh, specifically a little bit more than every other BronyCon combined. I see. Okay. All right. Huh. It's not. It's not quite doubled. Uh, right. I don't think anybody, any of us, would be mentally prepared for. <laughs> For 16,000, 16, 17,000 bronies overtaking Baltimore. I mean, I'd love it. That'd be fantastic. That would be fantastic, but that's, I mean, we're approaching, you know, larger than small city population. A little bit. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, I'm, I, I would, I would love, but at the same time, dread. Yes. But at the same time, love. Yeah. Uh, yeah. If, if we, uh. If we doubled again, <laughs> I can foresee it just every year doubling. And by 2050, half the population of the planet will be BronyCon attendees. And it, the convention center will have to be like the Eastern seaboard. Oh, geez. It would be like Burning Man for ponies. <laughs> Brony Man. Brony Man. There you go. <laughs> Though I'm wondering which effigy we would use. Uh, no, let's not speculate know. on that. Let's not. <laughs> uh, I don't. I don't. I don't know if BronyCon or Bronies are going to be around till 2050. If it is, it's it certainly would have been a very interesting ride that didn't end. Yes. Uh, yeah. I can. But, I, I don't think it'll be in the same capacity. No. But uh, at the I'll, same time, we still have people who love the original Star Trek, and that hasn't been on since the 60s. So. It's true. You know, I. Uh, just kind of thinking about it. Um, I've, you know, whenever it ends, whatever, I've kind of, I've kind of held the same mantra um, that I tell time and time again to people who always like to talk about um, this fandom and is it going to end? Is it not going to end? And right. it really, it really boils down to simply put, you know, this fandom is just riding the lightning. Um yep. Going where it goes, and at the end of it, if everything was just to magically shut, shut down, and there was no more EQD, there was no more EFN, there was no mm-hmm. more anything, um, it's all at the end of the day. It's all about what you did. It's all yeah. about who you met, and it's mm-hmm. all about the stories you got. Yeah. So you know, if if you got those and everything ends, that's all that's important. Yeah. Very true. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, it's probably not going to be something that we induct our grandchildren into. But, I don't know, at the same time, it's not something I would feel ashamed telling my grandchildren about. Oh, absolutely not. I mean, hey, we got five more years, right? <laughs> at least, yeah. Then the spin-offs start. <laughs> oh, man. 
I I can't imagine spinoffs. You know, a lot of people talk about like, oh man, obviously you want to have a spinoff for the Cutie Mark Crusaders, uh, uh, but I, I'm not I'm not really sure. I mean, really, isn't that just kind of technically more of the same? I mean, yeah. I mean, when you, when you look at like Happy Days and all the spinoffs that produced, at least all those stories were at least kind of unique. Yeah, one of heck, one of them had an alien. Yeah, but very true. Yeah. Um, <laughs> A lot of that people was... forget that that was Happy Days. Good, good on you for remembering that Mork came from Happy Days. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> how, how, how could one forget? Uh, a lot um, of people do. Now, if I see if there if there were ever a spinoff, I think it would have to be something related, but not. I, I could see a Wonderbolt story. We'll have Ooh. we'll focus on the Wonderbolts and items that they have done or do, and uh, tales from Everfree Forest. Uh, you see, those would be good. But I feel like those would probably work better in the comic medium. True. Very true. I, especially like the Tales of Everfree Forest. That has almost like a, a Tales of, from the Crypt yeah. sort, sort of uh, thing going on for it that would work really well. I think so, comics. yeah. yeah I, I think it's possible. I'm, you know, I, And not necessarily animated. Like you said, a comic could work. But I'm just you know, brainstorming, throwing things out so that eventually I can say, hey, check this interview. I posted it here. Check it out. One year later, they did it. I called it. I called it. Bam. Hell yeah. Yeah, it was recorded here on uh, February 27th at 9.07 Eastern Standard Time. Exactly. And we didn't splice in that today's date is February 27th, 2014. Not at all. No, not at all. It was completely fluid. Not fabricated whatsoever. <laughs> I could foresee those happening. I, again, I don't think it would quite get the popularity of the original, but I can see it. Yeah. I just hope we don't do a G3.5 situation. Nah, if I, if I had to take some really not-so-conservative, speculative guests, mm. I would imagine we have... Four more seasons, maybe five at minimum. Mm -hmm. One for the next couple of years, maybe maybe two movies. Yeah, uh, not including the the Rainbow Rocks thing, right? Right. Which which I think will Rainbow Rock. Ah, uh, I see what you did there. But Wait, um, okay. <laughs> I hope so. It was pretty blatant. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but but I, I can I can definitely see two more movies. And I wouldn't be surprised if maybe we got a Cutie Mark Crusaders movie. I think that would be the best way to uh, finish their arc of the story off, to be honest. Probably. Like, maybe like a, uh, a three to four episodes worth movie yeah. where at the end of it, uh, they all get their Cutie Mark. Or better yet, all but one of them get their Cutie Mark. See, I was thinking for drama, one gets their Cutie Mark. Only one. Eh, and I, I, I and feel like I, I could I, see if one got their cutie mark, hiding it from the others to the point of like beyond wearing dresses, just like painting over their own uh, flank and trying to sand it off or something. I don't know. Ooh, that's, that's not with a no, power I, sander. Not with a power no. sander. But oh, that's that's starting to get into the PG thirteen sort yeah. of range there. <laughs> Ponies don't go that dark. Um, uh, but no, I never really thought about that. That's actually a, that's a, that's a really good idea. Um, the, the 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 one I was thinking is like early on or maybe midway through, uh, two of them get their uh, cutie mark, and the third one feels like a bit of an outcast. Okay, I could see this. Heck, we'll combine it. One gets it and then hides it. But then they find out about it, and then the second one gets it. And then the third one has to do it. So we've combined the stories into one. We've instantly got two of the three episodes right there. Why have they not hired us to write this so far? Listen, McCarthy. I know you're listening to Come this. Come on now. <laughs> you are welcome to this idea. <laughs> and then and then you get, and then you hand it off to Larson, and they all get wings. Yep. There we go. Done. No, we'll even make it just hilarious. For some reason that nobody understands, Apple Bloom's cutie mark is a pair of wings. And everybody's just, what? What? Huh? <laughs> and it's I'm, never explained. I'm, I'm not going to lie. That would be a terrible idea. <laughs> I think so, too. But I think it'd be funny as heck. A little bit. 
turns out at the end that it was just Diamond Tiara trolling them, and she she tattooed them when they were sleeping. <laughs> wow, that's 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 cruel. <laughs> Funny, but yes, absolutely. Uh, well, a question that I do ask in each of my interviews, um, in all of My Little Pony, what would you say is the one line or one scene that describes you as a brony? Oh, jeez. Man, that's a that's a good question. I have asked it 70 times so far. 70 times? Every am, I your, am, I, am I your 70th? You are the 70th interview, yes. Wow, congratulations on 70. Yay, thank you. That's that's pretty impressive for most podcasts. That's that's like uh, that's like a year and some changes worth of work. It is indeed. Yep. Yeah. Seventy interviews, seventy weeks. And I'm I am definitely not avoiding the question at all. Uh huh. Uh huh. And I'm <laughs> definitely not patiently waiting for an answer. Oh man. <laughs> Um, geez, Usually your that's... first instinct is probably the best answer. And it doesn't have to be you know, a specific line. We've had seen some people quote an entire episode. I draw the line and it's saying the entire show. That I wouldn't allow that. Um, uh, let's see. Um, geez, you know, this is going to suck. Uh, yes. But um, what was the episode where, uh, where uh, Twilight goes insane? Lesson Zero? That's the one. Okay. Like, um, no, that's no, that's not it. No. Like, like her, her, like her feeling of going crazy, but not why she goes crazy. Okay. Okay. Is is pretty much uh, how it feels leading up to a convention. I see. Okay. Okay. Uh, a mixture between that and the art of the dress. Mm, okay. uh, just being like crazy, crazy busy, having to do things and then redo things, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, and just that that level of stress and panic. Sure, sure. If <laughs> it's not quite the answer you're looking for, no, no, that's a decent answer. I can understand. Uh, uh, that is kind of like a little bit of what it's like to be conveyed uh, running, okay. running running the convention sure sure and then 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 thusly i will then steal that and say hey that's like being me <laughs> okay i think that's legitimate i found but of course but of course you know you never show that you're always calm cool collected absolutely yeah of course <laughs> yeah don't let them see you sweat mm-hmm. no nope. screams internally all the screams internally <laughs> i thought it was I don't think it's completely out of character at all. I think it's absolutely 100% character, but I thought it was hilarious. The difference between Twilight's reaction in Lesson Zero when she thinks that she has a task that she hasn't done, that her her mentor has given her this task and she hasn't done it and completely freaks out. And then this last week, when all of a sudden she was planning on teaching three little fillies and a whole class shows up and she's fine. She's like, all right, I'll be teaching 40 kids instead of three. Cool, let's do it. Doesn't even blink. To me, I mean, that's exactly the difference between where your stress comes from. Is it something that your mentor told you to do or something that you're willing to do yourself? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be completely honest with you here. Yeah? I've not actually seen this week's episode. I won't spoil a darn thing. I won't say another word about it then, and I apologize for saying as much as I have. Nah, it's cool. Um, I uh, I'll be honest. I actually typically um, I'll watch the episode a couple of days late, but I'm sure. you know I'm actually not home. I'm in North Carolina for work, oh. uh, and it's typically tradition that I will not watch the episode without my girlfriend. This uh, is a good thing. I highly approve of this. Um, so I've been out of town, mm-hmm. and we've just not had a chance to see it. So. I, I won't say another thing about it then, even though, I mean, technically it's, you know, been almost a week, so I could, but no, I'm, I'm vehemently anti-spoiler. I won't say a word. Well, I thank you. Yeah. I thought it, it was a great episode. I'll, I'll say that much. I, I really enjoyed it. I enjoyed a lot of the reactions and that part where you find out that everybody's actually made of chocolate, such a big shock. I couldn't, oh. I couldn't get over it. It was amazing. I, I could just eat that up. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I gotta say this 
all of season four has been quite the step up from season three. I would agree. I, um, I think they've and, been knocking it out of the park every episode. And I think I'm probably one of the few people who thinks it. But I, I thoroughly enjoyed all of season three. Um, okay. I thought the episodes were all pretty good. Um, obviously, it was not all of them were that great. And I mean, I don't hold it against them. I know yeah. they had, you know, they had Equestria Girls yeah. uh, to worry about, which I think was well worth it. I'm also one of those people who loved Equestria Girls. Hmm, okay. Uh, uh, but season four definitely has been whew, yeah, some, some it's, really it's been good phenomenal. work. I, at, I rather enjoyed most of season three. I think I might be one of the only people who liked the premiere the uh, first two episodes, I liked them. I liked it conditionally. Okay. Um, I, they, some, the whole King Sombra thing, mm-hmm. um, kind of felt, eh. Now, I know it's, it's pretty obvious. It's probably like either end of season four or otherwise season five. Right. We're going to see the return of King sure. Sombra. His uh, horn survived. I mean, the it, horn was it, completely intact as it flew away. Yeah. Yeah, easily. He's he's going to come back. Yeah. Um, and that will be that will be fun to watch. Mm-hmm. But I found I found the whole lack of what they did with him a little disappointing. Yeah. Yeah. That said, the music was fantastic, so it totally makes up true. for it. True. Very true. As as with most most things that Daniel does, it totally makes up for anything bad. Yeah, I would say. <laughs> and to be honest, I found even you know uh, William Anderson's background music in this season openers that was fantastic. Mm-hmm. It was really good. Uh, yeah, the, the the music all around is spectacular, especially yes. for a kids show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I I I still remember you know back when I was a kid watching things like King Arthur and the Knights of Justice. Uh, the music for that, if anyone remembers that, and if you don't, I do. You should... I do. Oh, that show is amazing. I remember the, I remember the one episode where they were attacked by people who had a Japanese influence, and nobody could beat them, so they decided to learn judo, and they learned it in a day, and then were able to win. Yeah, that sounds like something that, that a '90s <laughs> cartoon story plot would have. <laughs> that's that's the solution. Just learn what they do. Do it, and then you will win. Yep. The end. Within a day, mind you. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Probably with a cheesy montage while you're at it. I think it was, yeah, I think it had the montage. <laughs> but yeah, like, compare that to, like, you know, music and kids' cartoons and just, like, TV these days. Mm-hmm. By, you know, day and night difference. It's so fantastic. Yes. So much more effort is put into it. And it probably has a lot to do with, like, you know, the software and stuff. True. That you know the musicians use, and the capabilities are, are a lot more there. Well, than I, they used compare, to. I like. I think one of the hugest differences to me, if you watch the original Roadrunner uh, Wiley e. Coyote cartoons, the first ones were the music in them was absolutely fantastic, and that's when they had to do recording with an orchestra or yeah, a small big band. band. Yeah, and then they had the late '60s episodes where it was done by one guy with a synthesizer, and it sounds horrible. And I think the jokes are pretty much the same, and the animation is comparable, but the later Wile E. Coyote cartoons were just horrible, and I think it was because of the music. It just didn't add to the effect whatsoever. Well, I mean, that's the whole point of what music's supposed to do to anything, is it's supposed to set a mood. Exactly. And, you know, if you can't set the mood properly, then you're not going to be invested whatsoever. Yeah. Yeah, so I'm very happy that we've got reached a point in technology where we can, even without a live orchestra, set an excellent mood. I'm very yeah, happy about this. Although I'll tell you what, you know what this show needs more of that they had in the '90s? It needs a lot more montages. Indeed. Yeah. We got the we got the one with you know the cutie Mark Cruceris with that addicting song. Yes. Uh, but man, we we need some more montages. I think we should go in the direction of Strong Bad and have enough montages where we can eventually make a montage of montages. Man, that idea is whack. Totally. <laughs> I'm not even talking wiggity whack. I'm just talking regular kind. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and make you jump, jump. <laughs> but anyway, I digress. <laughs> 
That's all my show is, is digression. <laughs> I don't, we don't need to apologize for digression. That, that makes up like 98% of my shows. I should rename it. We'll just call it digression. Digression with Osaka Jack. Yeah. The whole intro will be, and now digression with Osaka, um, you know that guy, the, the, the one I've been talking about. Oh, hey, his mother called the other day and we were talking it. <laughs> no, you know what? Not even digression. Just, just be like, be straight to the point. But I digress with Osaka Jack. <laughs> I Wednesday might have to get a change. Interesting. But I digress with Osaka Jack. Hmm. That's why they pay me the big bucks. Yeah. Interesting. Interesting. By the way, your fee oh. for being on the show should be in your bank account by the end of the day. Excellent. You know, it's true. I mean. I make I make a whole whopping zero percent of all profits from BronyCon. I make the same amount from EFN, interestingly enough. It's 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 a pretty sweet gig. Yeah, yeah. I I compare it to I've always said uh, it's a professional hobby. Oh, totally. That's you know that's anytime you get up into any sort of management type anything mm. in a volunteer position. Mm-hmm. That's exactly what it is. It's a professional hobby. Yeah. I mean, it takes... I mean, this is not something you can do half... You could do it half-heartedly, but it shows in the end. And, oh. Yeah. But yeah, you got, you got to put as much effort into this as somebody would put into a profession. And hopefully it shows. I know it shows with BronyCon. You guys have been doing an excellent job. Uh, I'll, I'll be honest. It's, uh, it kind of sucks sometimes. I, I do call it my second job. Mm-hmm. I'll, work, I'll work like anywhere between 8 to 10 hours... Uh, my normal job, and right. then pretty much immediately after that, I'll like I'll go to the gym for like an hour, and I'll mm-hmm. make some dinner, and then it's emails, meetings, mm-hmm. uh, planning, yep. um, or just general shenanigans yeah. with either my my vice chair Fulner, who was on your show before, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, or just any any number of my staff. Yeah. And then, and then when I'm not doing that, it's time with my girlfriend. Yes, I understand. I, I will get home like, all oh, right, I've got a weekend off. Oh wait, no, I need shows. Okay. Yeah. Well, I'm wondering. Obviously, we can't say anything until the contract is complete. Obviously, but are there going to be any guests this year that have not previously been to BronyCon? Yes, yes, there will. Ooh, uh, we actually just announced one today, as of the recording, oh. or um, or as into the past, however many days this is. Let's right, see. Right. It's Thursday, so Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, six days. Uh-huh. I shouldn't have had to do that on my hands, but I did anyway. Whatever. Six days from from when this airs, or mm-hmm. from before when this airs, uh, we announced Tabitha St. Germain, the Woo-hoo! lovely the lovely Rarity and Princess Luna and Derby Granny and Granny Smith, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, as well as many other shows besides My Little Pony. Oh, and um, the new Zipper Will. The new, oh, oh, that was her? I believe so. Oh, man, that, that was an adorable pony. I know. Absolutely. She, she is what I would love to imagine all of our attendees are like. <laughs> it's yes. just it's all of our kid attendees, and mm-hmm. then her father is their father. <laughs> now, uh, but I'm, I just want to know, is BronyCon going to be the first to get Graham Verche, the returned Pip? Mm, I don't know. <laughs> Um. Oh crap! I uh, I promised I wouldn't. Okay. Um. Sorry, well, uh, but I have ruined it for you. But yeah, the episode you have not watched yet, Pip Squeak returns. Oh man, I didn't know that. Way to way to ruin it for me. Sorry. I'm so okay. Um. <sighs> well. Yeah. Well, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. <laughs> um. But besides besides Tabitha. Um, let me, let me, let me go down our roster real quick of okay. who we've, who we have currently announced. Yes. Um, we have, we announced Tabitha today. Mm-hmm. Uh, she's never been, um, pairing really well with Tabitha is Kazumi Evans, who's never been before. Oh, okay. She does, she does rarity singing voice. Yes. And I, I believe could, also she does Silver Spoon, right? I believe you are correct. Yeah. Um, It'd actually be really fun watching the two of them converse together. Yeah, that would be cool. 
uh, we have uh, Shannon Chan Kent, who also does uh, some singing uh, for the show. She does Pinkie Pie. Yes, that's right. Wait, oh, am I? And she does Silver Spoon. She does Silver Spoon. That's right. Ah. Man, I am losing all of my references. I need to just keep a list in front of me. Ugh, okay. It's okay. I'm totally not just looking this up as we go along. <laughs> uh, no, uh, Kazumi actually only does uh, rarity singing voice, but she does work for Lilith's Pet Shop, too. That's it. That's what I was confused with. Okay. All right. Um, uh, technically, I'm going to have to call this, uh, we've never had them before. Okay. Uh, but Daniel Ingram. Oh, okay. Uh, technically... Um, he was in a Skype call That's right. for, for BronyCon January 2012, but personally, I don't think that counts. Uh, uh, uh not, I'll not, okay. I'll give it a half count. Yeah. He, he, he half came to BronyCon, but now, now he'll be able to get the full BronyCon experience. Yay. Um, the only other person, um, who has not been, uh, to our convention so far is Tony Fleeks. Okay. Um, and he does uh, some of the comic covers. That's for right. The comics. That's right. Um, now, kind of funny thinking about it. I'm, you know, I'm going down the list, and we've mm-hmm. announced we've announced eight guests thus far, which mm-hmm. is probably eh, give or take maybe half of what we'll announce. Um, I don't hear about that. I didn't say it. Don't don't don't, don't tell don't tell anybody that on the show. Don't um, say a word. And and then also don't don't hold it to me or if, if I'm <laughs> correct. Right. Um, but of those eight of the eight people we've announced, um, more than half of them have never been to BronyCon before. Which which I really I really like uh, because um, it keeps it really fresh mm-hmm. um, and it allows it allows us to give new people what I like to call the BronyCon experience. Sure. Uh, because I, I like to think we do a really good job of treating our guests of honor really well. Um, and our attendees, I mean, you it's it's a really fantastic experience to right. walk on stage in main events hall yeah. and just have you know Explode four four to stage. four to eight thousand people just exploding to see you. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, I mean, and so that's, that's of what we've announced thus far. We got, we got a few other tricks up our sleeve, um, for what we're going to announce, but you know, like always, BronyCon guarantees to be quite entertaining. Yes, indeed. I think if it's, you would stop right there, it'd be enough for a con in my opinion, but I know that BronyCon isn't going to stop. So it's, it's, it's true. I mean, it's, I mean, it's kind of hard for us to know, well, we know when to stop. Uh, but, uh, <laughs> but we, we never really want to, it's, right. it's, it's our, I mean, we, we've been quoted by some people as to be the, the gold standard of, mm. of conventions in this sure. fandom. And it's, it's a lot to live up to. And it's something sure. that year after year after year, and now after year after year, or two years after this, mm. it's something that we constantly strive for. Right. Um, there's, there's, there's no breaks. It's it. There's only becoming better and better. Right. <laughs> no pressure. No, no, no pressure. No pressure. <laughs> <laughs> I do like that. Uh, I think it's nice to have the new guests. And honestly, some of the new guests, it isn't that they weren't wouldn't have been asked previously. It's just. We're finding new talent that's involved with uh, the ponies. Like uh, the comics are relatively new, and uh, GM Barrow's books are relatively new, and there's always new stuff and new people involved with it. And I'm glad that we can get people that have been working with that stuff, like you said, Tony Fleeks. I'm glad that we can get them to conventions because they deserve the love. Me too. Like yeah. pony ponies are entering a whole lot of different mediums. Yeah. Um, some of, some of which, um, ultimately, um, result into conventions having new guests of honor. Mm-hmm. Um, some of, some of them not, um, some of them entering other mediums like the, uh, like the trading card game that, sure. uh, yes. was, that, that was announced at BronyCon in 2013. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and then, you know, a lot of other companies sort of releasing new, new types of products and whatnot. Right. right. Um, there's there's a whole lot of interesting things uh, where where ponies are sort of starting to seep in mm-hmm. that that give you know a, a convention runner 
um, a lot of interesting things to play around with, and then a lot, and then the attendees a whole lot of new and interesting things to be involved with as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like like I can guarantee you, um, if not if that if not us, which let's be honest, it would probably not be true. Uh, <laughs> we would we would do this, but if more cons don't um, do things like trading card stuff, yeah, um, like as like events or as panels. Mm-hmm. They would be surely remiss, uh, because yeah. I mean the trading cards in and of themselves were kind of cool, but mm-hmm. the card game, the card game gets into a whole different levels of interestingness. Yeah, that's uh, what I've heard. I, um, I've not played myself. I do own a deck. I received a deck as a gift. Oh, nice. Um, from a friend. Uh-huh. Um, I've just not gotten the chance to sit down and play it. Uh, but it's it looks to be. I'm told it's. Really I can specific. almost. I can almost guarantee you that one is coming to Japan, if not already almost finished. <laughs> oh, I wouldn't be surprised. The localization on it's probably all all it took. Yeah. Everything else is probably just gravy. Well, I mean, the company that brought Pony over here is Bushiroad, which is known for making card games. So, oh, well, then that's that seems like almost a guarantee then. Yeah, I would. I mean, I I, I honestly have no official word, but at this point, it's like, well, duh. It's a gimme. Pretty much, but yeah. Like I mean, I mean trading. I mean lots of like you know, card game stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, definitely, definitely see that being a big thing. Yeah. You know, this year and into the future. Um, and just like I mean, even besides that, just and just little, little bits honest, of I mean, at this point, if BronyCon were to have Weird Al Yankovic, it would not be a divergence of interest. It's true. I suppose it wouldn't. Um, I I absolutely cannot offer any any sort of um, here or there for your listeners on that one. I know. I know. Uh, I know. I'm just saying that if he were to attend, it would make quite a lot of. I guarantee you, there's crossover. Oh, absolutely. Brody's and Weird Al fans. I guarantee that. <laughs> it is. I I completely agree with you. Um, and it would actually it'd be it'd be great for our convention because it's similar to kind of like what happened with John Delancey. Yeah. Um, we would we would get a, we would get a lot of bronies who are uh, happen to be fans of Weird Al. Yeah. Uh, but we would most assuredly just get people who are fans of Weird Al but don't know what My Little Pony is. Yeah, that's true. Um, or barely know what it is, and they're just there to see Al, and that's and that's how you create bronies. In, indeed, yeah. Or it's one way. <laughs> it's it's one way. Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. <laughs> but but alas, I cannot offer um, any any light of hope or for that. Yeah, we'll yeah. we'll we'll see what happens. <laughs> oh. Well, everybody, today we've been speaking with I'm Josh Dean, who is not me. So, yeah, that's right. I'm Josh Dean. We've been yes. over this. Yeah, I'm, who's I'm, on I'm, first I'm and all that. You need to change your change your name to just your Josh Dean, and then confuse people more when you introduce yourself. Oh, uh, I have I have I have staffers and friends who do that all the time. So you are <laughs> yeah, not me. original <laughs> joke. Woo-hoo. Okay. But thank you so much for coming by and chatting with us today. Oh man, it was a blast. Oh good. <laughs> Everyone, uh, be sure to follow I'm Josh Dean at, on Twitter and BronyCon. There's a few you know sites you can go to to check that out, of course. We, uh, we're definitely on all of the social medias, mm-hmm. um, or at the very least, you know, just go to bronycon.org. This is how it works, yes. This has been Osaka Jack with Into the Spotlight on Everfree Network. We'll catch you next time. Bye, guys! Bye.